Hi everyone, I'm Ellie Everts. Today we are going to be finishing my Princess Mercury costume from Sailor Moon. In a previous video, I went over how I made a beautiful flowing skirt for this costume and today we are going to be finishing the dress that goes on top of it. Alrighty everyone, let's go ahead and get started. and as such, there's a lot less stability in the dress, so our pattern has to fit almost perfectly for this to work. To be honest, I made more mock-ups for this dress than I normally make. By the end of this process, I have made three mock-ups, but making all these mock-ups means there's less room for error in our final product. Once I was happy with my pattern, I seam ripped my mock-up and began cutting my materials. For this dress, I am using a blue polyester satin from SY Fabrics and a lighter blue polyester crepe from Joann. To stitch this dress together, I'm going to start with the bust, stitching together both cups at the same time. You might notice that my dress seems to keep changing colors. This is because I'm working on my fashion layer and my lining layer at the same time. Once my cups are sewn together, I'm going to clip and press my seams. Clipping into the curves of these cups helps them to sit flat. Next, we're going to attach our cups to the color blocking detail that sits along the top of the bust. Sewing-wise, this is the most technical stitch of the whole costume. I'm starting at the inside of the bust and pinning my entire cup to my color blocking. Then, as I am stitching these pieces together, I place my needle into the point of the color blocking, lift my presser foot, and turn the fabric. This will help me get a crisp corner. Once stitched together, go ahead and clip your curves as well as your corners and press. I was so proud of how this corner turned out. It's so crisp and beautiful. Now I'm going to attach the main body of my dress to the bust piece, following the same steps as before, stitch, trim, and press. Our dress is really starting to take shape. Next, I'm going to stitch the front and back of my dress together. Now we have a super cute dress piece. Once the stitch is completed... Warning! Ellie is about to make a major mistake. Do not follow her lead. So here you can watch me make a giant mistake. Here you see me cutting my lining at the waist so I can attach my skirt directly to my dress. In theory, this is a great idea, but I forgot to account for seam allowance. Or better yet, I thought I was better than seam allowance and wouldn't need any. Ugh, please do not do this if you intend to make this dress. Either make it as two pieces, a skirt and a dress, or if you really want to attach your skirt to your lining, make your lining as two separate pieces from the get-go and include seam allowance at the waist. Trust me, it's going to save you a lot of headaches. Well, now that I have cut my lining in half, we still have to finish making this dress. So I am going to start pinning my lining layer to my fashion layer. First, I'm going to pin and stitch around the top of my bust. Then I'm going to pin and stitch around the tabards. As always, clip your curves and press this flat. Now things get a little bit convoluted. I'm pinning my skirt to the top of my lining layer with the right side of my lining to the wrong side of my skirts. This is going to get stitched on with as little seam allowance as possible. When I made the skirts, I had mentioned seam ripping a section of the skirt to allow for a zipper. 
I'm making sure that this section is directly center back of my dress. Here is where I start to compromise due to my previous mistake. I'm now attaching a piece of bias tape along the bottom part of my lining. Now I'm ready to stitch the other side of this bias tape to the seam allowance where my skirts were attached. Honestly, this did not end up looking as pretty as I would like. However, it gets the job done and it hides all my raw edges. Once my waist area is finished, I'm going to add in an invisible zipper. I've added a slash down the back of my dress that aligns with the seams in my skirt. This is again, not the best way to add a place for a zipper, but I digress. You've seen me install dozens of zippers by now, so I won't go into too much detail. Once the zipper is installed, I'm going to attach bias tape along the scoop back of my dress. This bias not only finishes the back of my dress, but also becomes the straps. As such, I've left a fair amount of extra bias hanging off the back of my gown. Now, I'm going to blind stitch the other side of my bias to my lining. Once I reach the loose strap parts, I'm going to stitch one side to the other, try and keep them as even as possible. there's just a little bit of hand stitching left. Next, I'm going to finish off my zipper area by trimming off any extra seam allowance and hand stitching the edges of the zipper down onto the lining. This hides any ugly seams and while not beautiful on the inside, it's very functional. my dress form to find the best placement for my straps. At first, I'm just putting these straps into place. Then I seam rip a small section of the stitch between my lining and fashion layers. I'm going to insert the end of my strap into this hole and stitch it closed by hand. bit too tight, but I'd rather them too tight than falling down all the time. All that's left are a few final details, such as the three blue gems on the straps, the neck bow, and the jewelry. Let's start with the strap gems. Mine are made of glass cabochons that I painted and set into silver settings, then glued onto my straps with E6000. For my neck bow, I made a tiny bow following the Sparkle Pipsy bow pattern and attached it to a thin tube of fabric to go around my neck. Then I added two super long tubes as bow tails. For the necklace and earrings, I simply played around with some findings that I had been gifted by my mom before settling on this design. The necklace might be my favorite part of this costume. It makes me feel so elegant and beautiful and really makes the costume come to life. Mercury is one of my favorite characters, and I always feel so at home when I get dressed as her. I hope you enjoyed watching this build vlog. If you did, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Of course, if you want to know more about how I made my Princess Mercury costume, I have written tutorials available on my Patreon, so if you want to go check those out, be sure to go into the link down below. As always, I really appreciate all your guys' support. It means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, be sure to keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. And as the guardian of love and intelligence, I will punish you. <laughs> Bye.